promotional consideration paid for by the following. It's time once again for another quick shot review. And this is the 2021 movie released in November, known as Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City by director Johannes Roberts and is set in 1998 following the story of Resident Evil 1 and 2 intertwined. Uh, so is this movie good? It is a reboot of the Resident Evil series and uh, well it's something. Anyway, if you want to hear my full views on this film, please join me in the main part of the video and please like and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you for the main part of the video, Cheap Shot Nation. So, welcome to Raccoon City. What a mess of a film this actually is. Um, it could have been so good. The original Resident Evil and Resident Evil 2 are such iconic, really awesome games with reboots, uh, remasters, uh, multiple platforms, and still beloved to this day. You'd think making a film out of them would be really quite easy. But what I think is the downfall of this film is the fact that there's too much crammed into the story, taking elements of both Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil 2. There's a lot of miscasting here as well. Um, most notably, Leon Kennedy. Um, yeah, the acting is suspect at best. The CGI is not good. It, you can tell, even though it is a reboot, they didn't get the amount of money put into it as the uh, original Resident Evil movie series by Paul W. S. Anderson. And uh, yeah, it really does show. So, um, Kaya Scully. Skull Delario plays Claire Redfield, Robbie Amell plays Chris Redfield, Hannah John Kamen plays Jill Valentine, Tom Hoover plays Albert Wesker, uh, you've got Avon Jagir playing Leon Kennedy, and Donnell Logue playing Chief Irons, as well as Lily Gay Gale uh, playing Ada Wong towards the end. Uh, Bit of a spoiler there. Neil McDonough plays William Birkin, uh, and that's pretty much your lot for main characters in this film. Like I say, it is directed by Johannes Roberts. So um, the pharmaceutical giant known as Umbrella is basically has basically made raccoon city what it is because of its uh, prosperity and how big the company actually was um and uh, it also led to the downfall of raccoon city as it started closing things and firing people and then there was it just got turned basically into a wasteland as it started moving away from Raccoon City. Um, it's at this point where, you know, I'm not going to do any spoilers here by telling you there's a virus that's released. Um, probably a, a film that's been released based on, you know, what the world is going through at this point in time and very misunderstood about the 
the timeline in which this should have been released, really. Um, and the tagline is witness the beginning of evil. So, like I say, it was really difficult to make a bad movie out of this. The narrative is already there. I feel like the casting could have been a lot better. Um, there were set pieces that weren't included that should have been. There were set pieces that were included that shouldn't have been. And overall, there's not much action in it, really. It is all dialogue. And it is exactly that. Dire <laughs> is not very good. Um, there was some bits. There's a reference to a Jill sandwich. So, I mean, that got it a star in itself. But, um, yeah, um, it's just about people trying to uncover the dark truth behind uh, Umbrella. Uh, fun fact, though, about this film, and I think this is really, really cool. Capcom actually gave the filmmakers the blueprints to recreate the main halls of the Spencer Mansion and the Raccoon Police Department. Um, just a shame the rest of it was a bit rubbish, really. And uh, yeah, there's not there's not much more to say about it. It's just not good. Um, and when you find yourself thinking, uh, you know, bring back Paul W. W. S. Anderson, um, it, it really does make you think how bad this film actually is. Now, I know people will have, I mean, it's very mixed reviews, uh, will have absolutely loved this film. I was not one of them. It is not horror. It is a gay, it is a, movie based literally on a video game and not done very well um i think this is uh, an issue again with modern cinema it, the same thing affected uncharted although that is actually a watchable movie this is not this was a total letdown it it just takes the material throws it out of the window brings some references to keep fans happy and it just drags. It drags so much. At nearly two hours, it is just, yeah, there's nothing from take to take it from one moment to the next. And like I say, Leon Kennedy, miscast, misrepresented as well. It played as a bit of a goof, um, which, you know, he wasn't a goof. He was learning. Um, and, um, yeah, definitely miswritten that one uh claire redfield is okay um chris redfield plays plays his part but ultimately it's just boring um and yeah it just falls into more into the category of of bad um it's got a rubbish script it is very poorly made and um, it just yeah uh, just doesn't work and it is devoid of atmosphere which is you know the atmosphere in the video games plays a huge part it's like an extra character the buildings are an extra character the settings are an extra character the Spencer Mansion was an extra character in the first one, the Raccoon City Police Department was an extra character in part two and three. Um, yeah, it's it's not a reboot that we needed. It's not done very well. I can't recommend that you watch this film, even if you're a fan of Resident Evil. And yeah, I would avoid this one. It was advertised on film posters outside my local cinema, but never actually got released. So that should tell you everything that you need to know about Welcome to Raccoon City. The best part of Raccoon City is the sign saying you're exiting Raccoon City. And thank goodness we got through this one. Anyway, if you have watched this film and you disagree with me, let me know in the 
comment section down below. But be nice. Um, join us on social media, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And uh, yeah, I will see you next time, film fans. Goodbye.